Over the next seven minutes or so, we're going to look back on a week where Vladimir Putin's victory parade was a flop, Keir Starmer put his reputation on the line over Beergate, Prince Charles stepped up to open Parliament, and the nation watched as the Wagatha Christie libel trial played out. This is the Standout 7 from the Smart 7. Don't forget to hit that follow button to get your daily updates at 7am. There had been much speculation about what Russian President Vladimir Putin would do on Victory Day the 9th of May as he hosted a military parade in Red Square. Some experts had expected a declaration of victory or an escalation, perhaps even a mobilisation of additional troops or a formal declaration of war on Ukraine. Instead, he resorted to recycling of conspiracy theories about Nazis in Ukraine to justify the special operation, but made no new announcements. Everything suggested that a clash with neo-Nazis, nationalists, who the United States and their little friends backed, would be inevitable. Meanwhile, US Director of National Intelligence Avril Haines, testifying before the Senate, warned that if President Putin feels there's an existential threat to Russia, he could escalate his nuclear threat. But she says overall, he's still sticking to plan A. We assess President Putin is preparing for a prolonged conflict in Ukraine, during which he still intends to achieve goals beyond the Donbass. We assess that Putin's strategic goals have probably not changed. The consequences of Russia's war on Ukraine continue to unfold this week, as Finland's president and prime minister have now confirmed they want to join NATO without delay, less than 24 hours after signing a new security pact with Britain. Sweden's also expected to announce a similar decision within days. This comes as Russia's threatened to take retaliatory steps if its neighbours Finland becomes a NATO member. But the Finnish Prime Minister says Russia themselves caused the decision. We would like to maximise our security in way or another. And last but by no means least, there was an unexpected U2 concert as Bono and the Edge turn up to play in a Kiev metro station with local band and soldiers Antiella. <laughs> Oh no, they've suffered enough. The Queen missed the opening of Parliament yesterday for only the third time in her reign. She previously skipped 1959 and 63 because she was pregnant. It's understood she watched on TV as Prince Charles, along with Prince William and Camilla, did the honours at the formal state opening of Parliament, accompanied by Her Majesty's crown, which travelled to the ceremony in a separate Rolls Royce. Her Majesty's government's priority is to grow and strengthen the economy and help ease the cost of living for families. There were 38 new bills listed in the speech laying out government policy for the next year, including a levelling up bill, a transport bill and a commitment to Ukraine. In these challenging times, Her Majesty's government will play a leading role in defending democracy and freedom across the world, including continuing to support the people of Ukraine. There was also an online safety bill and a Bill of Rights, but no specific mention of the Northern Ireland Protocol. And after many U-turns, a confirmation on a long-awaited ban. Legislation will also be introduced to ban conversion therapy. Labour leader Sakir Starmer took dramatic action on Monday in a bid to stop the continued pressure over the so-called Beergate incident, which is already under investigation by Durham Police. He stopped for a meal and had a beer while campaigning in 2021, but he spent the last 10 days fighting off allegations of wrongdoing from the Daily Mail and now also The Sun. He decided that enough is enough and he's laid out clearly what will happen next. I believe in honour, integrity and the principle that those who make the laws must follow them. I'm absolutely clear that no laws were broken. I simply had something to eat while working late in the evening. But if the police decide to issue me with a fixed penalty notice, I would, of course, do the right thing and step down. Labour Deputy Leader Angela Rayner also says she'll resign if she's fined, although presumably none of this will actually have any impact on Boris Johnson, who's quite likely to receive further fines for Partygate shortly. Keir, however, says it's about integrity and doing the right thing. I don't actually believe that those that are accusing me believe rules were broken. They are trying to simply drag all politicians into a place where the public thinks we're all the same. For me, this is an in-principle position.
The local election results which rolled in across the weekend failed to deliver a clear picture for the UK's immediate political future. The Conservatives lost over 300 seats, but Prime Minister Boris Johnson was still putting on a brave face. It's mid-term and it's certainly a, a mixed set of results. We've had a tough night in some parts of the country, but you're still seeing uh, Conservatives going forward and making uh, quite remarkable gains. Labour leader Sakir Starmer, who's now awaiting the results of reopened police investigation over Beergate from 2020, was upbeat about Labour's results. Labour is very clearly turning the corner and now we're marching towards that general election. And after a good run of results for the Lib Dems, leader Sir Ed Davey wouldn't be drawn on the prospect of a coalition with Labour for the general election. If we make those advances at the next general election, we will topple lots of Conservative MPs. What happens after that can, what, can frankly wait. That's hyperbole. It's two and a half years away. There's still to come on the standout seven. Peter Andre gets stroppy about his sausage and Elon Musk has good news for Donald Trump right after this Welcome back Tuesday marked the start of the so-called Wagatha Christie libel trial. It sees Rebecca Vardy suing Colleen Rooney over the famed Instagram detective post. Colleen accused Rebecca of selling stories from her private Insta to the media in a dramatic post in 2019 that said it's dot 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 Rebecca Vardy's account. Rebecca denies the story and is suing for libel over untrue and unjustified accusations, which means seven days of high drama as the case plays out. Day one saw the Rooney's house referred to as a Morrison's mansion and poor old Peter Andre referred to as a, a small chipolata. Sky News reporter Bethany Minnell was in court. As far as money goes, these people don't need to win any money and that's lucky because they're not going to you know this is all about you know damages it's about reputation peter andre wasn't taking the chipolata thing well he used his social media on thursday to respond asserting that in fact he was closer to a sky remote than a tiny sausage oh and also to ask the world to stop making chipolata jokes i took it for 15 years but it is a serious matter and even though you know some of you are going to go oh get over it don't say anything whatever you've got to understand when it goes on and on and being brought up and what's even worse it's brought up in a high court. Elon Musk spoke out on Tuesday about his plans for Twitter. And, well, it's good news for the big orange guy. He says the decision to ban the Donald alienated a large part of the country and it also didn't stop Trump from having a voice. He was speaking from what sounds suspiciously like a supervillain lair to the Financial Times at the Future of the Car conference. I guess the answer is that I, I would reverse the perma ban. I will say I'm not, I don't own Twitter yet, so this is not like a thing that will definitely happen. Um, but my opinion, and Jack Dorsey, I want to be clear, shares this opinion, uh, is that we should not have perma, perma bans. The 75th BAFTA TV Awards took place on Sunday evening with Richard Aoade hosting for the Royal Festival Hall. There were some surprises as It's a Sin failed to win from any of its six nominations and Sex Education didn't win either of its two. TV channel Dave had a double win with Big Zoo's Big Eats and the rapper was delighted. Representation is so important. Growing up, there wasn't many chefs or people that looked like me on telly. And now there's young people watching us doing arting thinking, you know what? If these waste men can win a BAFTA, <laughs> surely we can. Anton Deck and Stephen Milhern picked up an award for Saturday Night Takeaway. Sean Bean and Jodie Comer picked up Outstanding Actor Awards. And Billy Connolly was presented with a BAFTA Fellowship. I couldn't be happier. It's, it's made me such a happy man getting these good attendance medals. Now that my career's out the window. This has been the Standout 7, the best of the week from the Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow, 7am, with the Sunday 7. Have a great rest of your weekend. Written, produced and published by Daft